Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fit Curls, finally. My name is Angela, I am a fitness professional and a curly hair enthusiast and I use this channel to teach you how to keep your curls in shape. So join the Fit Curls family officially by clicking that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon next to it if you wanna be notified every single time I post a new video, which I would say is every Friday afternoon, but I can't promise that right now, so just bear with me and definitely turn on the notifications so you don't miss a single video that comes out whenever that happens. Those of you who don't know, I have been in the process of moving out of New York City. I am currently at my parents' home out in West Virginia, waiting to close on our new house in a brand new city. So I'm super pumped for that, but that has meant that our situation for a little while has been extremely transient, hence why I haven't really been able to create for you guys. But I am super pumped to be back here with you all today with a brand new video about something that I have gotten tons of requests to address, which is protein moisture balance. So without further ado, let's dive in. Easily one of the most confusing things about starting or even being in the middle of your curly hair journey is how the heck to achieve the perfect balance of protein and moisture in your curls. Now, why the heck do we need these things anyway? Well, let's start with protein. Protein actually provides your hair with structure. It helps give the curl clumps shape. And in fact, the building blocks of the cuticle, the outer protective layer of each hair shaft, is actually made out of protein molecules, specifically a protein called keratin. And these molecules overlap each other, kind of like shingles on a roof, one slightly on top of the next. The more space you have in between each of those keratin molecules, the higher the porosity of your hair actually is. Now, as far as moisture goes, moisture actually contributes to the second layer of your hair underneath the cuticle known as the cortex, which also contains the melanin responsible for your hair color. Moisture provides elastic elasticity, that gorgeous shine and resilience against breakage. Since both of these types of molecules provide different things that the hair shaft needs, it makes perfect sense then that we need a balance of both in order to maintain our curls health. Now, what the heck does balance even look like? You'll be able to identify balanced hair by how it feels as well as how it looks. Balanced curls are going to feel pretty soft to the touch, you're gonna see minimal frizz, easy clumping of curls, so each curl finds its family quickly and easily and stays in it. And a very good diagnostic test for you to be able to do is something that we call the stretch test. So if you take one single strand of your hair and hold it in between your fingers, if you pull at it, you should feel a little bit of a stretch. Hair is meant to be slightly elastic. So if you take that hair and you pull on it and you see it stretch and then spring back to where it was before, you have achieved the elusive protein moisture balance. Of course, what we see more often than this, unfortunately for all of us, is imbalance. So let's talk a little bit about what that actually looks like and how to fix it. The type of imbalance you are most likely familiar with is either a moisture or a protein deficiency, which means that your hair doesn't have enough of either one of those things in order to remain healthy, elastic, and resilient to breakage. When it comes to moisture deficiency, what you will most likely see and feel is a rough, straight frizz. It feels dry to the touch, it's brittle, it breaks off pretty easily, and it just kind of loses its shape because the curls don't clump together. They kind of separate, lose their form, and feel very just straw-like, and they look that way too. But with moisture deficiency, if you practice the stretch test, you'll actually see that strand of hair not stretch at all, and it'll just break right apart. No stretch, no elasticity because there's not enough moisture in the hair cortex. On the other side of the spectrum, you can actually be quite deficient in protein and that manifests 
with completely separate symptoms. Instead of a lack of spring and shine, you'll actually notice a lack of shape. Your hair will feel incredibly soft to the touch, most likely because it's got plenty of moisture. But what you'll notice is that the curls lose their shape. As a day or a wash week goes on, you'll see that they just kind of drop. They get heavier, they get looser, the diameter of your curl gets wider, and you see a ton of frizz, but that frizz doesn't feel dry or rough. It actually feels really soft. If you practice the stretch test on protein deficient hair, that hair is going to keep stretching until up oh, the two ends are no longer connected. Either way, it results in breakage. So we gotta make sure that we're shoring up the hair with sufficient moisture and sufficient protein in order for that elasticity and balance to be restored. Now, of course, as in all things, there is definitely such a thing as too much protein or moisture. So we're gonna talk a little bit about overload and what that looks like in each of these cases as well. Now, protein overload is going to look in some manners pretty similar to moisture deficiency in that the hair loses its elasticity completely. It does not stretch and it'll break right apart if you pull on a strand. But protein overload, you'll usually see pretty tight curls. You'll almost have an excess of structure. Any of the times that my hair has been overloaded on protein, my curls still have shape, but what they lose is stretch and shine. If your hair is overloaded on protein, it's going to be extremely brittle, which means it's gonna be very easy to break, whether it's wet or dry, it'll just snap right off. On the other end, moisture overload can look very much like protein deficiency, but moisture overload can get kind of scary. There's an extreme form of moisture overload known as hygral fatigue. When we go from wet to dry, to wet, to dry, to wet, to dry, to wet, to dry, wet, to dry, wet, to dry. Over and over and over again, especially in a relatively short period of time, the hair loses its ability to maintain its structure. So you will see the hair mush to the point of falling apart. Your hair will feel almost gummy. Over moisturized hair, especially hair suffering from hygral fatigue, will take a very long time to dry or it will never completely dry at all. All. It'll feel soft and if you pull on it, it'll just stretch all the way off your head. Now moisture overload can be corrected by doing things like spacing out your washes and pre-pooing your hair, but hygral fatigue, that super extreme form of moisture overload where your hair just completely loses its integrity, can only be fixed with scissors. That's right, the only way to get rid of hair suffering from hygral fatigue is to cut it off. Now, thank goodness, none of these issues are actually unfixable. So let's talk about building a balanced routine for your hair and correcting an imbalance, either from one side or the other. When it comes to building a balanced hair routine, it's important to take your hair's porosity into consideration. Like I mentioned earlier, porosity is determined by the space in between the keratin molecules that comprise your hair's cuticle, that protective outer layer of each hair shaft. A good way to test your hair's porosity is actually just by taking a single strand of your hair. And what I want you to do is run your fingers up and down the shaft. Nice and light, nothing too rough, but with enough pressure that you can actually feel what the outer part of that hair shaft really feels like. If the hair feels smooth as a seal, you probably have pretty low porosity hair, which generally means that those keratin molecules that form up your cuticle are really nice and tightly overlapped, super watertight shingles, which means it's going to be pretty easy for products to actually build up on your hair instead of penetrating into the cortex. And I'm very sorry that I had to just use the word penetrate. If your hair is high porosity, you're gonna feel more lumps and bumps as you run your fingers up and down that hair shaft, which means that you have more space in between those keratin molecules. The good news is your hair is going to let moisture in extremely easily. You're not gonna be prone to a ton of buildup, but the downside is your hair is going to leach moisture out as easily as it takes it in. So consideration, 
for high porosity curlies is going to be using products with ingredients that help to seal that cuticle just to make sure that the moisture stays in your hair where it belongs. Deficiencies are relatively easy to correct actually when you look at some products that are very readily available on the market for just such a restoration of balance. Protein treatments and deep conditioners. You've got one on either end that is gonna deliver a nice impactful punch of either protein or moisture, depending on which your hair tends to be deficient of. If your hair is feeling super dry, seems like it's probably time for a deep conditioner. That can help to correct that moisture deficiency and even help to bring protein overloaded hair back from the brink. Where conversely, a good punch of protein can help to uh, seal only what is needed in the moisture realm into your hair, seal that cuticle and keep excess moisture from finding its way in and weighing those curls down to the point where they become overcooked spaghetti. Now when it comes to overload, things can be a little bit trickier to correct. They require a really delicate hand, a willingness to go kind of low and slow with the introduction of new ingredients and as much patience as you can possibly give them. So let's talk protein overload first. Since protein overload is something that is very easy to suffer from if your hair is lower in porosity, I would highly recommend starting off right off the bat if you notice any symptoms of protein overload by clarifying your hair. This is going to strip off any buildup, particularly of excess proteins, off of your hair and kind of give you a nice clean slate, open pores in your cuticle so that way all the much needed moisture can find its way in. You wanna follow that up with a deep conditioner. I suggest looking for one that is protein free or extremely low in protein. You can find this out by looking at the ingredient list on your product. If you see the words keratin, amino acids, which are actually the building blocks of proteins, hydrolyzed, which indicates the state that the protein has been processed into in order to properly penetrate the hair's cuticle, or even just the word protein, you may wanna steer clear of that product for now if you're dealing with an overload situation. On the opposite end of the spectrum, if you're dealing with protein deficiency or a moisture overload, you're gonna to wanna to use a more powerful protein treatment, so you're gonna look for products that are very heavy on those kind of ingredients, or even do a more intensive in-salon or at-home treatment. In my last video, I actually gave you guys my favorite at-home DIY solution for protein treatment. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a card right up here so you guys can open that in another tab and check out my DIY gelatin treatment. It's super low cost and it's super effective. Hey there, it's Editing Angela from the future, realizing that I left out a couple of key details for fixing moisture overload. One of the other treatments that I highly recommend anybody with moisture overload use is a bond building treatment. The most popular of which on the market is Olaplex, and for good reason. Olaplex treatments can restore the denatured chemical bonds between the protein molecules that comprise your cuticle, causing that to be much more shored up and strong so that way it doesn't turn your hair into overcooked pasta. Prior to any wash, I also recommend that you use a pre-poo treatment or basically just coat your hair and scalp in oil to prevent excess moisture from making its way into the cortex of your hair and thereby preventing moisture overload. Okay, back to the regularly scheduled video. The titles of a lot of curly hair products kind of tell you what types of ingredients you're gonna be getting yourself into. If the product is titled with something like strengthening, it's most likely going to have a higher concentration of protein ingredients in it. Whereas if you see something that says smoothing or hydrating or moisturizing or softening, it's going to include a higher proportion of moisturizing ingredients, oils, butters, and even silicones. Silicones are in fact moisturizing ingredients because they help to seal any water that you use into your hair's cuticle. Build up a good balance of protein rich and protein free products in your arsenal. That way, as you continue to kind of touch and feel your hair and get more and more familiar with how to diagnose where your hair might be out of balance, you have the products on hand that you need to be able to correct that. Tip the scales from one side to the other, right back to the middle so your hair can finally find hair nirvana, curlvana, 
Can that be a thing? As you experiment more and more with your hair, as you figure out what products work best for it, just have patience and be willing to respond to what your hair is telling you that it needs. The more you practice, the more confident you'll be able to get in your diagnostic skills and in your solutions. I'm gonna to put together a blog post on my website, thefitcurls.com, which I am going to list down below of a whole bunch of different products that I recommend for each of these situations. I'm gonna line up what I talked about in this video and kind of give you guys a much more comprehensive list that you guys can hopefully go back to over and over again until you figure out the right balance for your hair and how to troubleshoot any of those days that make you want to pull those beautiful curls out of your head. Trust me, you got this and I am here to help. So anytime you need, come back to this video, go to the blog post, check it out, and we'll figure this out together. And that is it for today's video. What did you guys think? I know this took me such a long time to get out for you. I kid you not, this is the third time I filmed this. Feel free to drop a line down below with your thoughts, opinions, and impressions on this video and let me know what you thought. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them down below. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more uh, scientific videos like this, go ahead and hit this with a thumbs up. It helps the individual video's performance, it helps the channel overall, and it gives me an idea of what you guys really wanna see on this channel. If you haven't joined the Fit Curls family already, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss a single video that I have coming out for you. And with that, thank you guys so much for watching the Fit Curls. Love your curls, love each other, and I will see you all next time. Bye. It's okay. It's working. My name is Angela. I am in a, I have been moving in the pro Whoa. Let me see if I can actually grab one. Depth perception is for shit. I don't know why I'm rambling like that. Balanced hair with a good balance between protein. Whoa. My white balance just went bonkers. I got notes to make sure I know what the hell I'm talking about. Similar to moisture deficiency. Whoa, what the heck happened? Fabulous. Amino acid. Amino acid. Deficient. White balance. Figure it out. That's what I'm thinking for the